the armed forces of the Argentine Republic, in Spanish, Fuerzas Armadas de la República Argentina, are controlled by the Commander-in-Chief and a civilian Minister of Defense. In addition to the Army, Navy and Air Force, there are two security forces, controlled by the Ministry of Security, which can be mobilized in occasion of an armed conflict. The National Gendarmerie, a gendarmerie used to guard borders and places of strategic importance, and the Naval Prefecture, a coast guard used to protect internal major rivers and maritime territory. Traditionally, Argentina maintains close defense cooperation and military supply relationships with the United States, and to a lesser extent, with Israel, Canada, Germany, France, Spain, Belarus, Turkmenistan, and Italy. Structure The three branches of the Argentine military are under the direct authority of the Defense Ministry. While the Argentine National Gendarmerie and the Argentine Naval Prefecture, as security forces, under the direct authority of the Ministry of Security. On June 12, 2006, President Nestor Kirchner brought into force the defense law, which had been passed in 1988 as a means to modernize the doctrine of the armed forces and define their role, though successive governments had failed to put it into effect. The law states that the armed forces will only be used against foreign aggression and reduces the powers of the heads of the armed services, centralizing whole operational and acquisitions decisions under the authority of the armed forces joint general staff emphasizing jointness. History the Argentine military, as has been the tendency in other Latin American countries, were considerably more influential in former times. Starting in 1930 and throughout the 20th century, democratic governments were more often than not interrupted by military coups. The terrible consequences of the last dictatorship destroyed the military image as the moral reserve of the nation and opened the way to transform them to into today's armed forces. 1955 to 1962 internal strife after the Revolution Libertadora coup that deposed President Juan Domingo Perón. The armed forces split into opposing sectors named Azules y Colorados. The fight would end in 1962 with military clashes and the defeat of the Reds who were opposed to Perón. 1965 Operation 90 In 1965, the Argentine military conducted land military maneuvers on Antarctica under then-Colonel George E. Leal, nicknamed Operation 90. This was undertaken ten years before the Antarctic Treaty came into being and was conducted to cement Argentina's claims to a portion of those territories. 1975 Counterinsurgency In 1975 the armed forces started a massive operation in the Tucuman province to crush the ERP Guevarist guerrilla group, which attempted to create a revolutionary foco in this remote and mountainous province. In the northwest of Argentina, national reorganization process The last military dictatorship, the national reorganization process, lasted from 1976 to 1983, as Isabel Perón was unable to defeat the terrorist organizations of Montona Ross and ERP. The military took power during the 1976 Argentine coup de TAT and exterminated the violent communist guerrillas by random detentions, torture or death. The current government of Cristina Fernández de Kirchner that sympathizes with Perón, antagonized the armed forces with the justification of the past junta and limits the powers of the current armed force to avoid state terrorism of the past. 1978 Beagle conflicts During much of the 19th and the 20th century, relations between neighbor Chile chilled due to disputes over Patagonia, though in recent years relations have improved dramatically. 1982 Falklands War On 2 April 1982, the military junta invaded the Falkland Islands sought to maintain power by diverting public attention from the nation's poor economic performance and exploiting the long-standing feelings of the Argentines towards the islands. Such action would also bolster its dwindling legitimacy. 
After short but fierce naval and air battles, the British landed on 21 May, and a land campaign followed until the Argentine forces surrendered on 14 June. 649 Argentines and 255 British died during the war. The political effects of the war were strong and prompted even larger protests against the dictatorship, which hastened its downfall. 1983 Transition to Democracy The democratic government of Raúl Alfonsín that took office in 1983 prosecuted the 1970s crimes and made the unprecedented trial of the juntas and soon the army was rocked by uprisings and internal infighting. Far-right sectors of the army rebelled in the Carapintadas movement. To contain the rebellions, Alfonsín promoted the full-stop law and the law of due obedience. The following president, Carlos Menem, gave the presidential pardon to the military found guilty in the trial of the Juntas. It would not be until 1990, when the last military uprising in Argentine history was crushed, that the political conflict within the army finally subsided. In January 1989, during the subversive attack on La Tablada, the army used white phosphorus in a violation of the Geneva Convention. Gulf War and 1990s Argentina was the only Latin American country to participate in the 1991 Gulf War sending a destroyer and a corvette in first term, and a supply ship and another corvette later to participate on the United Nations blockade and seek control effort of the Gulf. The success of Operation Alpha as it was known, with more than 700 interceptions and 25,000 miles sailed on the operations theater helped to overcome the so-called Malvinas Syndrome. From 1990 to 1992, the Barradero-class patrol boats were deployed under UN Mandate ONUCA to the Gulf of Fonseca in Central America. In 1994, the three Drummond-class corvettes participated on Operation Uphold Democracy in Haiti. Also, in the 1990s, Argentine armed forces began a close defense cooperation and friendship policy with neighbors Brazil and Chile and focused in United Nations mandates. The Argentine military had been reduced both in number and budget, but became more professional, especially after conscription was abolished by President Menem. The British embargo due to the Falklands War was officially eliminated and Argentina was granted a major non-NATO ally status by United States. President Bill Clinton present the modern Argentine military forces are fully committed to international peacekeeping under United Nations mandates. Humanitarian aid on emergencies relief and support the country's continuous presence at Antarctica. Democratic governments since 1983 straightened the military budget and did not approve any large-scale equipment purchases. Argentina military spending is one of the lowest of South America and as of 2010, its 0.9% of GDP only exceeds Suriname since the 2000s. The Argentine defense industry was relaunched after the politics of privatization carried out during the 1990s by Carlos Menem administration, virtually eliminated all. While Mercosur is only an economic entity so far, the strengthening of confidence among the member countries has been beneficial to the peace in the region, exercising a useful role in supporting democracy. The Mercosur served, for example, to discourage the Paraguayan military from an attempted coup in early 2000. In 2003, for the first time, the Argentine Navy interoperated with the United States Navy Battle Group when destroyer Ara Sarandi joined the US Enterprise Carrier Strike Group, and destroyer Squadron 18 as a part of Exercise Solid Step during their tour in the Mediterranean Sea. On 2007 an agreement for cooperation in peace operations was signed with France. Argentina created with Chile a combined force for future United Nations mandates. Named Cruz del Sur, the new force began assembly in 2008 with headquarters alternately on each country every year. On 2009, UNASUR, the South America Countries Union, 
created the CDs in order to promote cooperation and transparency between their armed forces. On 2011 they perform with Chile the PARACACH with support of the German Space Agency which provided satellite imagery international participation. Argentina was the only South American country to send warships and cargo planes in 1991 to the Gulf War under UN mandate and has remained involved in peacekeeping efforts in multiple locations like UNPROFOR in Croatia, Bosnia, Gulf of Fonseca, UNFICYP in Cyprus and MINUSTAH in Haiti. UNFICYP was also a precedent in the Latin American military as troops of Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, Peru and Uruguay are embedded in the Argentine contingent since 1999 and as of June 2006. Argentina is the only Latin American country to maintain troops in Kosovo during SFOR operations where combat engineers of the Argentine armed forces are embedded in an Italian brigade. In 2007, an Argentine contingent including helicopters, boats and water purification plants was sent to help Bolivia against their worst floods in decades. In 2010 the armed forces were also involved in Haiti and Chile humanitarian responses after their respective earthquakes. Argentine military forces formed part of Haiti, UNMINUSTAH video, Cyprus, UNUNFICYP, Serbia, Province Kosovo, NATO KFOR Pictorial, Serbia, Province Kosovo, UNUNMIK, Belgium, NATO ICC Shape, Bosnia, NATO EUFOR, and as military observers in UNTSO, MINURSO, UNMIL, MONUC, UNMIS and ONUCI. Argentina was also responsible for the White Helmets Initiative, Gallery. Independence Day Army Parade, Janine, 2004. San Martin Camp for UNFICYP in Cyprus. Navy P-3 on Joint Operations in Panama. Brazilian Carrier Joint Operations. Research and Development. Development. CH-14 Aguijo. Argentine Antarctic Presence.